Snap introduces ray tracing in Lens Studio, a rendering technique that improves the quality and realism of virtual objects placed in the real world through accurate lighting simulation. This technology improves the quality of any lens which features scenes and objects where lighting bounces and is reflected on their surface. For example, the inclusion of fabrics that are metallic or polished, and materials such as metals, stones, glass, or polished surfaces. Real-time ray tracing has become a premium feature for realistic experiences in games, but has only appeared on gaming consoles and PC graphics cards with custom ray tracing hardware. Now, Snap brings ray-traced reflections to smartphones with tools to empower creators to create more realistic experiences while ensuring good performance for users. Let's get familiar with the tools, performance features, and use cases for real-time ray tracing in Lens Studio. To get started, you can use the ray tracing reflections template seen in this tutorial, or you can follow with your own project. Please make sure you have advanced graphics features enabled in the project info window to access the ray tracing tools. Let's start by taking a look at the AstroCat example. In the Objects panel, select the World Object Controller. Open that and then select the Examples group. Under Examples are a number of child groups with different sections that we'll use to explain the ins and outs of ray tracing. Hide 01 Emitter Receiver Relationship and Show 03 AstroCat. Ray tracing supports one reflection camera. If you select the 3D camera in the Objects window, you can see the ray tracing toggle at the bottom of the Inspector window. That toggle is the key to enable ray tracing, which you can see in the Preview window. If you are having trouble viewing reflections in your own projects, always make sure that your primary camera is the only camera with ray tracing enabled. Navigate in the Preview window so that you can view AstroCat as well as its reflection in the mirror object. It's important to note that reflections will only show in the preview window and not in the scene window. As you move around in the preview window, observe how the stage also reflects AstroCat with a slightly soft reflection. If you select the stage light object in the stage prefab and toggle it on and off, you can see the light reflection on AstroCat appear and disappear. Ray tracing is applied as the relationship between objects in the scene. Currently, objects with mesh renderer and skinned mesh renderer components are the visual components that interact with ray tracing. Ray tracing has two settings to control how mesh renderers behave in your scene. If we want an object to be visible in a reflected surface, these should be set as reflection emitters. In this example, AstroCat and the stage are both emitting reflections. Reflection emitters will be reflected by reflection receivers. The mirror has its reflection receiver property active and has a reflective material on it, which means that it will reflect objects set as reflection emitters. Objects can also have both properties active simultaneously, like the metallic surfaces of AstroCAD, which are visible both in reflections on the stage and mirror and reflect other objects in the scene like the stage lights. It's also important to note the visibility of ray traced reflections is tied to the metallicity of physically based rendering materials, so ensure anything you intend to reflect has a metallic PBR material assigned. For more information on authoring reflective materials, see the link in the video description. Now that we have a baseline understanding of how ray traced reflections work in Lens Studio, let's learn how we can maintain solid performance on Snapchatter's devices. Reflection receivers impact performance depending on the percentage of the screen covered with pixels that are ray traced. The larger a ray traced receiver is on the screen, the more of those reflection pixels have to be calculated. In order to mitigate this, we have the rays per pixel control to decrease the number of calculations, though at a cost to the overall sharpness of reflections. Reflection emitters affect performance depending on their polygonal complexity. More polygons being reflected directly equals more calculations per reflection. The way to alleviate this is to use lower poly count stand-in geometry and omitting high poly objects from casting reflections, which we'll cover later. The overall complexity of our scene is the final aspect to consider. Lens Studio offers built-in tooling, emitter and receiver groups to help alleviate unnecessary receiver and emitter relationships. This can cut down on some of the more expensive, less obvious inter-reflections in your scene. 
Let's continue to dive into the examples now to put our theory to work. Hide 03 AstroCat and show 04 HiLo optimization. In this section, we can see a group of three different high heeled shoes on the stage. Currently, only the left heel in the heels prefab is set as a reflection emitter, so in the mirror, we can only see one shoe reflected. The other two heels on the right are built with very different levels of detail. One high detail shoe with 10,000 polygons and a low resolution stand in with only 1,000 polygons. This allows us to use one set of geometry for primary rendering and another lower resolution geometry for reflection emission. Open up the Heels prefab and open Heel R. Select Heel R low and set its position X value to zero. This will make it overlap directly with the high resolution shoe, which looks a bit funky in the scene view, but don't worry. This is the expected visual. Select each of the mesh objects under Heel R low and set them as reflection emitters. Once this setting is toggled on, another checkbox for hide from camera appears. If we check that box, they will no longer be rendered by the 3D camera, but will still be visible in reflections. In this way, we can improve performance by using lower resolution reflection emitter proxies to speed up rendering without a noticeable difference to the overall visual presentation. To further refine what objects are displayed in reflections, ray tracing includes emitter groups and receiver groups as a way to make sure that the number of reflections per object is handled as optimally as possible. Let's enable object 05 Advanced Reflection Groups Optimization and set up the scene using groups. To make things a bit easier to see, we'll raise the entire object up by a value of 120 along the y-axis of position. Select and open Heels Try Me. Then move the camera to where you can see the left shoes reflected on the stage. Let's set up the Heel R object reflections by setting the emitter groups. We're going to specify for each receiver which emitters they will interact with. Let's take our inner heel for example. It should only interact with the low poly version of itself. Let's select heel R inner low. And in emitter groups, first select none and then enable just group five. Now only receivers that interact with group five will see this emitter. Let's do the same for heel R inner high to make sure it will only interact with group five emitters. If we repeat the process for the rest of the heel using different groups, we should get a much more optimized result. As we optimize the inter-reflections between objects, we'll see an uptick in overall performance. We've learned about a number of tools for displaying and controlling the relationships between objects to get the most out of ray tracing. Now it's time to step back and look at the camera's ray tracing settings that have the biggest impact on performance. Select the 3D camera ray tracing at the root of the objects window in the inspector. We'll see a few controls under the ray tracing toggle. Ray per pixel defaults to a value of one, and that means for each pixel in the scene, you'll get one corresponding reflection ray. You can increase the sharpness of reflections by increasing the value above one at a cost of additional ray casts. Conversely, lowering the value decreases the calculations that need to be made with a corresponding increase in frame rate. A value of 0.5 would mean that your scene is only doing half of the work per frame to render reflections, though at a cost to the visual fidelity of the reflections, which now have half the pixel count. The settings to use will depend on the nature of your scene, how clearly visible the reflections are, and what level of fidelity you think you can get away with while still achieving your desired effect. The ray tracing settings also include a rough filter toggle, which blurs reflections based on distance from object and the roughness value of the material. Rough range creates a maximum distance to apply the rough filter. Rough curve is a way to adjust the overall blurriness of the rough filter. Using lower values will intensify the amount of blur in your reflections. Rough hardening filters the appearance of reflections by making the reflections more or less blurry depending on the reflected pixel's distance from the object. Therefore, you can tune how blurry reflections become farther from the reflected object. We hope these examples have helped pique your curiosity in ray tracing, as well as provided solid information on what might be possible for your future ray tracing enabled creations. We've only begun to scratch the surface of what might be possible with these powerful new features. 
It's up to you to take ray tracing to its full potential with your next lenses.